Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Gotta get on this. This whole King Von thing. This is about to be a two hour stream, y'all, because I got a lot to say about this. Now, y'all have been asking me for a while, and I hadn't gotten a chance to watch it until this week because I have been busy. Uh, the King Von serial killer documentary was released by this white man named Trap LaRoss. He's a YouTuber. Now, what's very interesting about this, if you guys, who remembers, put a teacup in the chat, when me and BL Sherelle did a podcast close to two years ago after King Von died, and I said flat out, King Von was a serial killer, I, I there is no RIP coming from me. I don't mourn people who kill multiple people. And the fact that this is being praised is bullshit. If this was a white man in the Ozarks who was kidnapping people and killing them and leaving their bodies throughout the Ozark Mountains, nobody would be calling them a savage and a goon. They would be called a serial killer. Y'all remember I said that? I've been calling King Von a serial killer for the ever since that man died. So. The white boy then made a serial killer documentary about King Von. I got a chance to watch it. It was three hours. I said, well, damn, this is a deep dive for that ass. But it was good. It was good. Let me say this first and foremost. I can respect a documentary because they are not easy. Um, I have watched Trap LaRosse's work before. Um, he did a great job on the whole drama with the Jacksonville boys that, you know, spot him, got him, and young Ace, young and Ace, and Julio, 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 whatever. He did a good job breaking that down. But I will say this, it was something he did that turned me off. He was, he, I, I forgot what documentary or what video, but he had like his hair in twisties. It was like rainbow colored. I don't know. He was trying to act like some type of hip hop. You know, to me, he was playing digital blackface. And I forgot what video, but once he did that, trying to, he had gold teeth and he was just doing too much. I tuned out. I stopped. Like, if you're going to do documentaries, do documentaries, but all these little caricatures of rappers, I wasn't here for it, so I kind of tuned out. So when people were telling me to watch this documentary about um, King Von, I, it was long, so I had to break it up over the past few days. But I got a chance to fully watch it, and this is a lot of stuff that I had been known. Um, I've been on that Reddit subreddit where they've been putting the pieces together for years. Um, I thought he did a good job. I thought it was well done because the way he did it, the way it was shot, the way it was edited, it was a masterpiece. It was a lot of work. And one thing for me as an editor, I can always respect somebody who takes time to gather facts, to do really good editing. The editing was on point. And the fact that it was that long, I can tell you, it probably took him a month or more to do that entire deep dive. These deep dives, that, that's nothing he did overnight. And then he wasn't doing a voiceover. He was on camera. So that's even more work when you're on camera, you know what I'm saying, speaking and, and doing all that stuff. So, yeah, it was three hours. It was long. Now, from what I heard, there was some controversy. They said King Von's cousin, uh, y'all can write the name in the chat, child. They said that um, King Von's cousin got the documentary flag. And they... Okay, he said it took him three months. Okay, I knew it took him a while. Okay, so three months, I wasn't sure, but I knew it had to take a month or more. So thank y'all for um, posting that. So it took him three months. I can believe that because it was well detailed. And just, y'all gotta realize, just the research alone takes so much work to research and get everything in chronological order. And I don't know if he does this himself or if he has a team, I'm not sure, but this was a very good documentary. Okay, this was like Netflix level to me, in my personal opinion. Now, I was Balo. Thank y'all for writing the cousin's name. Balo Man. I, see, I, don't, I ain't got time for all this ratchet shit. Balo Man came out <laughs> and said, you know, hey, you're, you're making my cousin look bad. How dare you? And he got YouTube to take down the documentary. So I think when I went to go watch it initially, I couldn't find it. I said, well, damn, grand opening, grand closing. So then it came back. 
So I was able to watch it the other day. So I watched it. I enjoyed it. But I will say this. It is very interesting how a man from the UK who's very far removed from anything that's going on here in America has been able to set himself up very nicely, get a nice bag, honey, off of, once again, black death, murder, debauchery, and bullshit. Okay, he's all the way in the UK. And I noticed a lot of rappers before this King Von situation, they've never given him as much smoke. And I've, and I've spoken about this when me and BL Sherelle did another podcast. They've never given him as much smoke as they did DJ Academics and other people who, you know, who made those Warren Chirac videos and stuff like that. Just like they'd never give a lot of smoke to like No Jumper and things like that. It's like if a white man is talking about these issues, then it's, you know, oh, he's just doing a deep dive. He's just doing a YouTube video. But when black people are doing it, y'all need to chill. Y'all are snitching and all this stuff. So I just, I thought that was very interesting. Now, Another thing that was very interesting is the dialogue that came from this. And this is what I want to talk to y'all about. We're not going to watch all these clips. We're going to watch a few. He ended up doing a, a meetup here with uh, Van Lathan, who used to be, excuse me, he used to be from TMZ, but now he has his own podcast. And some guy from Chicago. King Dave. So they, they interviewed Trap LaRosse and DJ Academics, but this clip is just with the three men. So let me share my screen. We're going to watch this. And I have, I have a, a, a few things to say about this here. Okay. All right. And shout out to whose channel is this? Live from the Teapot. Shout out to you. All right, we're going to watch this. I felt like he did meet the requirements that the FBI have for a serial killer. And, you know, I, I feel like I'm not involved in that life. I'm not in a gang. And I feel like, uh, you know, I'm just a guy on the internet consuming music, reviewing music, looking at song lyrics. And, you know, I didn't feel like I shouldn't be able to talk about this and uh, put the documentary out. It's obviously gotten a big response. Mm. Um, some good, some bad. You know, I'm not afraid of having the debate about it. And I know some people's feelings have been hurt. And I'm down to listen and uh maybe understand why maybe some people didn't feel good about the video but that's my perspective you know the guy was super famous he was charting on billboard with songs talking about how many people he killed and i think uh, i decided to look into it and make a video i will um, explain a serial killer to me the definition that you received from the fbi so the fbi defines a serial killer as somebody that's killed three or more people with space in between each of the killings so not going on a killing spree and killing seven people in the same day. It's killing people with time passing. You got time to think about what you're doing in between the killings. And killing seven people, I don't think makes you a serial killer. The other element of, of what FBI defines as a serial killer is the element of psychological gratification. So people getting something out of the killings, people getting a sense of self-esteem or a sense of excitement out of the murders, a sense of excitement about not getting caught. And I feel that really the time when when bond could really be classified as a serial killer isn't when he killed all those people allegedly in the gang war it's when he started rapping about it it's when he started trying to convince the whole world that he had done this he wanted the whole world to know that he had seven bodies as he said and he wanted to continue killing people he had that famous lyric where he said uh killed some n words i'll do it again you know he allegedly put up a hundred thousand dollars and arranged for fbg duck to be killed after becoming a millionaire so I think it's really not the fact that he was in a situation, you know, where unfortunately he was pushed into violence by circumstances of where he grew up. That's not what I think makes him a serial killer. I think it's unfortunate a lot of people are born into difficult areas and are forced to do things to survive. But I think when it came to Vaughn, when he became famous, he became a millionaire. He kept one. Let me fast forward a bit world. to when this black man, King Dave, talks. But again, and that they can't play with you. You know, that's how. I even though it's going on, every time it jumps into the people's eye, it gets bigger. And somebody else builds up more courage to go out here and do and commit more killing. 
You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's deeper than just Vaughn. Like, you got to think about Vaughn kids growing up watching the video about they found the man a serial killer. It's okay. He raps about it. Parents and, 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 and they people can explain music to them because being an artist, you're a character. So I think the people that's like you, that's not really in this, not really from the culture, y'all take it as if, damn, this really won. Oh, this really such and such. These people be characters. You ever seen Famous Dex? He be t- two different people. The baby. He be two different people. So just because Vaughn was just tweeting, oh, I want to catch a body. He could have been talking about knocking down a female or something. You know what I'm saying? Or he could have just been tweeting. It. That don't mean that these things actually really be going on. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot of people, like I was on the phone with TF. THF Zoo yesterday, right? Bay Zoo. Y'all don't even know these YouTube videos be having them people picking them up. Times when they spend time in the county and they fighting another case, y'all drop a YouTube video about a body. Them people come pick them up. He in the crib chilling or a little less sitting in doing his time. He getting picked up. All because of YouTube videos. And Vaughn didn't tell you, oh, I killed K.I. I killed this person. I killed, it's all speculations, but I understand like your whole point. Like he put it out there for the people, right? But I just be wanting y'all to think about when y'all put these videos out about the people that's still living in these communities that can possibly end up shot, killed, or just a whole nother war. And it'd be like, y'all make y'all money off YouTube. Y'all get so famous that y'all don't even care but at the end of the day, we got innocent women, grandmothers, grandfathers dying off of you because of YouTube video. And my, I mean, because of me, your video, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's sparked because I I've been on the phone with people and they was mad about the Lil James situation, like when you put the wrong picture up there, that created something. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't really know what really came from that. You know what I'm saying? Because you put that body on on Vaughn. Now, they slide on somebody from O Block and they ain't kill somebody over there now. All because you put the wrong picture up there. But you ain't gonna you, kill you Notice how he's more mad at the wrong picture being up there than the fact that somebody was actually killed. And sometimes wrong pictures can end up as you're editing because sometimes when you go to Google, there's all these images that come up. So, I mean, I've done that before where I've used the wrong picture of somebody because it looked just like the person I'm talking about. So mistakes can happen, but there's more smoke for that mistake than the fact that somebody actually took a young man's life, regardless if that was his picture or not. Sympathy from that. But that mother, that father, that daughter, that son, they gonna feel all of that. You feel what I'm saying? And I don't even want to say like no hater, like I'm knocking your video because I'm really not knocking you. I understand what's going on, and I told you, if they get online and they these rappers, they tell on themselves. But my whole point is, be thinking about the bigger picture sometimes, and make sure you got real facts. Because if Bud didn't tell you this, you're right; it's all speculation. But just know you keeping the wars alive with everything that's going on. When you mention those ten people, just know it's people on the other side sliding now. That probably won't even think thinking about sliding them in old block because why they got other ops but now when you go mention Vaughn and they kill little such and such guess what just know they were sliding and people like you do be the cause for that bro okay I- let me let me stop because I can't take any more of the foolishness um and like I said no disrespect I've never heard of King Dave I, I don't know who this is my issue is the lack of accountability. Y'all got more smoke for this white boy in the UK and this documentary that he put out that y'all don't have to watch. So let's start there. They got more smoke for that than the fact that King Von himself was perpetuating this lifestyle. He was perpetuating this image. Like, let's let's stop acting willfully ignorant. You don't know if catching a body was killing somebody or getting a female. We all know what it means to catch a body. Like, let's stop. They put this in the music. We all know what it is to go out and go get some ass. Big difference. 
And so the, the thing that's very interesting when I watch all this, you know, is the fact that you have Van Lathan sitting up there as well. Now, I ran across a show that Van Lathan did. Um, I was watching it um, maybe like a month or so ago in my bathroom while I was doing my hair and stuff. And he was going like some, it's like a show where he goes to uncover hip hop deaths. So he goes to, he the one I watched, he was talking about Pop Smoke. What really happened to Pop Smoke? And he was doing interviews with people that we've never heard of, this, this, and that. So my question is, when Van Lathan is doing his investigative journalism work, is he not exploiting the hood? Is he not exploiting situations? Yes, it's on WeTV. Is he not exploiting gang stuff and, and gang drama and black on black violence? Is he not making a name for himself doing the same thing that these YouTubers are doing? Like, it's very interesting that people have all this smoke for YouTubers, but they don't have smoke for the people who are doing the same thing. Everybody is exploiting everybody, including myself. This live stream I'm talking about Latasha and Chris Brown and different people, that's what it is to do commentary. There's always going to be a bit of exploitation. And Van Lathan is doing the same thing. So for this guy to be so upset to me doesn't make any sense. Also, why has nobody ever held LeBron James accountable? LeBron James has far more reach then a Trap LaRosse, a DJ Academics, me, y'all know I ain't got that much reach compared to these guys. But where's the shame for LeBron? Let me go ahead and refresh y'all's memory. Because remember, it was LeBron James who really put a lot of people on to King Von. You know who the hell King Von was like that? To LeBron James, who I follow, okay, because I'm into sports, was banging uh, King Von while he was working out. Google how many times LeBron has shouted out King Von. Let me share my screen. Because we bring receipts around these parts. Here we are. Let me, let me make myself smaller. LeBron James shouts out King Von. Here he, and I can't play a lot of it because the music. Him dancing to King Von's song. LeBron James playing tribute to King Von. Again, I can't play the music. Paying tribute to him. LeBron James listening to King Von. Okay. There's so much LeBron James and King Bron, LeBron James and King Von, to the point where people are calling King Von or calling LeBron King Von or some mess. LeVon, they were calling him, instead of LeBron, they were calling him LeVon James off of King Von's album cover. Also, let's not forget. Bronny also introduced a bunch of young kids to King Von. Hold on. That was him on his live stream playing King Von. Okay. So what, what confuses me about this situation is that people always have smoke for YouTubers, for the people that they know they can pick on easily, like this white boy in the UK. And, and kudos to trap LaRosse for not backing down and, you know, really holding his own, okay? I'm sorry, but LeBron had more influence on people going to go find out who King Von was than trap LaRosse. I really heard that music because LeBron kept working out to this shit. And then my nosy ass was like, well, who was King Von? And then I listened to Welcome to the O and all that stuff. But I've never seen any of these black men have a thank piece on LeBron encouraging young people to go listen to King Von, who was a serial killer. On top of that,
when it came to LeBron James talking about, oh, you know, I don't dabble in hate speech and calling out Kanye and Kyrie. It was very interesting that he had a lot to say about this, but he had no problem promoting hate with, you know, the promotion of King Von. So let's go ahead and watch LeBron James a few months ago. Your position, you've been in the, in the position the past to speak for yeah, the um, I, I just, yeah, 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 I can tell you this. Uh, it's simple. Um, me personally, I don't condone any hate um, to any kind, to any race, um, to Jewish communities, to black communities, to Asian communities. Um, you guys know where I stand. And um, it's part of the reason why I didn't air the shop episode, why we kicked that, you know, out of the archives because it was hate conversation going on there. Um, and I don't represent that. Um, you know, uh, there's no place in this world for it. And nobody can, can benefit from that. And, um, and I believe, um, you know, what Kyrie did, um, caused some harm to a lot of people. Um, and he has since, uh, over the last. Okay. Uh, so y'all just heard that. So like I said, I'm not knocking LeBron for listening to King Von. That is his grown business. I don't tell people what they can and can't listen to. I'm very much aware that, you know, King Von was a fan of LeBron James. What I'm saying is I'm pointing out the hypocrisy for y'all who are slow and don't get what I'm saying. The hypocrisy to me is that LeBron has enough wherewithal to know Oh, I took Kanye off of my shop episode because he was saying mean and spiteful things towards the Jewish community and I don't condone hate. Okay. In the same breath, he also has in the past promoted King Von, who's done nothing but promoted hate about other black men in his music. Do y'all get what I'm saying? The hypocrisy. So what I'm saying is this. Instead of these men having think pieces trying to confront this white man about a, a documentary that he made, why are they not having think pieces and saying, hey, an influential basketball player like LeBron and even his son who has a lot of influence in the sports world and with the youth, maybe they shouldn't be promoting music like this. Because you can't say that it's okay for LeBron James and Bronny to, to you know, to promote him and, and call him, you know, you know, to shout out King Von and, and King Von, like I said, was a big fan of LeBron. Okay. You can say that it's okay for them to do it, but then when YouTubers do it, it's wrong. It's, it's, it's not okay for YouTubers to make documentaries calling out the violence in King Von's music. I just think it, it's just hypocritical. It's silly. These guys are a walking contradiction. So you mean to tell me his documentary has caused way more chaos in the hood. Oh, people are shooting. You're bringing up old shit from the past. Oh, the ops are out. This documentary, but not the fact that this man made the music and was taunting his dead ops in the music. Why didn't they have this thing piece with their homeboy before his death and say, hey, how about you stop promoting this? How about you stop making fun of other dead rappers? How about y'all stop smoking Tuca? They never want to hold their own rappers accountable. And that's weird to me. That there's more smoke for this white boy than the rappers who are rapping this low vibrational bullshit and who are keeping this, this perpetuation going. How about we stop rapping about killing ops? How about we stop rapping about taking other black men's lives? How about we start rapping about living to be 40? While y'all are so scared to date 40 year olds, you better hope that you make it to be 40. How about we start promoting that? So to me, it's a bunch of bullshit. All of a sudden, you know, oh, oh, you're making money off of the death. So is the person that you're on the live stream with. It, what, what did did Van Lathan do that whole project for free? Did he go to, you know, to to pop smokes hood for free? Hell no, nah, they cut a check. So he's making money off of dead rappers, too. So what the hell are you talking about? Straight up hypocrisy is all I see. At the end of the day, it was a damn good documentary. I enjoyed it. He pointed out a lot of stuff that people already knew, but he was able to put it in a digestible form. 
And it looked like he really took his time. It was well edited, well shot. Y'all should be more embarrassed the fact that this young black man allegedly took all those lives than the fact that this documentary is out because guess what? What came first, the chicken or the egg? He was out here wilding and doing all this crazy shit. He was putting in his music. So you can't get mad that YouTubers are now eating off of the, the chaos that he put out there. You can't. Last but not least, before I go, um, Asian Doll has also spoke out about the documentary. She's blasting people uh, who are bringing the documentary up to her. Oh, God, what I just do? Hold on. Okay, let me share my screen. Give me just a second. Okay, here it is. Okay. So Asian Doll rips King Von serial killer documentary. It's nothing but lies. So let's scroll down. So somebody says the King Von documentary was so long. I went to sleep and woke back up and he was still killing people. Facts. Asian Doll says, bitch, shut your police ass up. Then she says the documentary about King Von is not true. So she's very upset about this documentary. Now, what I find very interesting about Asian Doll is that ain't this the same rap girl who said that she's not going to be with the dude unless he got bodies? Let me see if I can find that up. Here we go. No, no, I don't, I don't, we keep receipts around here. I knew that was her. And then the other goofball, one of the, the other female rapper's girlfriend said the same stupid shit, but was crying the month before over takeoff's death. Make it make sense. So this is, this is Asian doll. This was her. Sis, is this you? The one calling people police ass bitch. Is this you, sis? This was October, 2020. Asian doll only dates serial killers. Please have at least three bodies before you talk to me, boy. Instagram model is fine rapper Asian doll just made it three times more difficult to find a good man. The 23 year old Sagittarius won't even speak to a man unless he's a killer and not just any killer. He has to be a serial killer. Okay. Um, She says, please have at least three bodies before you talk to me, boy. I like killers, she tweeted on Tuesday. The Dawes hardcore tweet was a little too gangster for most of her female followers to relate to. I ran over a puppy before and I cried, but I'm still a G, wrote one Twitter user. Another one says, only thing I killed was two goldfish and a hamster. Does that count? So she's since deleted that tweet. So for her to now try and call people, you know, police ass bitches and say that the documentary wasn't true, sis, I don't believe you, you need more people, okay? It, it's insane to me. Like I said, we don't forget anything around these parts. We keep receipts. So now all of a sudden, so when he was alive, oh, y'all loved the persona. Of him being the silent, what did they call him? The silent assassin, you know, the serial killer. He would just keep eating cereal randomly. You brag to the females who followed you, again, perpetuating that black women only want thugs. No, most black women don't want thugs. That's a stereotype. So you're perpetuating a... a a stereotype, this, what is it called? The soft-spoken assassin. It was some nickname child that y'all gave him on Twitter. Um, and now all of a sudden she's crying and saying that, you know, you know, everybody's the police and he didn't do this. When two years ago, this two going on three years, she was bragging about she doesn't want to talk to anybody unless they have three bodies under their belt. 
that has done more damage because think about all the young boys who follow her because she's beautiful, beautiful girl. And now the young boys who follow her think that's what I have to do to be able to get a baddie like Asian doll. I have to go out here and go kill other black men to be able to slide into her DMs. And y'all can say, oh, it's just a joke. You're taking stuff too seriously. Words have power. How many times I have to tell y'all that on my channel? The power of the tongue. So I don't take anything lightly. And I never will. Words have power. So when you're joking in that manner, best believe that there are some real people who are thinking that that's the way to go. So yeah, so people are trying to get mad at this man's documentary, all these foolish excuses that these men were making for King Von's behavior to me is sad. It's really sad. Don't blame him for the violence on O Block and for the violence continuing. Hold the people who are continuing, who are continuing to perpetuate the violence, hold them accountable. Just this week, and remember, I posted the video, didn't get a lot of views because y'all don't like serious topics, but it's all good. I still went ahead and did it, even though it was demonetized and it didn't get as many views as the video I posted the next day. But y'all remember just this past weekend, this was going down in Chicago. Let me find it. Here, Teens Riot. Is this man Dave? And I don't know because I don't follow him. Is he calling out these kids who did all this nonsense? Remember, this was in Chicago. Our newsroom yeah. shows more of last night's chaos. People were seen kicking, passing cars, crowding the streets, dancing on top of parked vehicles. Two days ago. And we're still waiting to find out and hear if police made any arrests from this last night. Earlier in the day yesterday, a viewer shared cell phone video showing a group of people jumping on a car that is driving along Michigan Avenue. Now this so where is King Dave Vaughn from TMZ? Oh, sorry, Van Lathan, sorry. Van Lathan, formerly of TMZ, where is the thank piece on this foolishness? Because I don't even know if any other black YouTubers even covered this outside of myself. I maybe maybe others did. I'm just saying. I know I did. It didn't get a lot of views, but I still covered it. Chaos has erupted in downtown Chicago. The reports of hundreds of teenagers smashing car windows, getting into fights. Look at this. Where's the thank piece on that? Where's the Let's all come together and, and do an Instagram chat on what just happened this weekend. Like I said, I don't follow them. Maybe they did do a thank piece. I don't know. But it's very interesting that they can all come together to be mad at this white boy's documentary. And literally, that was two days ago in Chicago. Did anybody else speak on this outside of my YouTube channel? I'm talking about other popular Black people who have a platform. Or did they just talk about Coachella? But I digress. The riot wasn't about nothing. They weren't rioting or protesting anything. It started on TikTok and on social media. They just decided to wild out. Teens sent it to their friends, sent it to their friends. Told everybody to go meet down on Michigan Avenue and just cause chaos. They're not rioting for a purpose. Just out there, just, you know, to be out there. But like I said, I didn't see a lot of black YouTubers covering that. But I see them mad at this white boy's documentary. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, like I said, I can't, I can't take, I can't take Asian doll, any of these folks serious. Not when you guys go out your ways to constantly perpetuate the nonsense and then, you know, play crazy. Like, you know, we're just imagining what it means to catch a body. Oh, no, that's, oh, that's not what it means. It means to get, you know, he could have been trying to get some ass. Yeah, okay. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.